Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the cadherin superfamily of cell adhesion molecules. Okay, right, so we've now seen the basic property that all uh, cadherin proteins have, which is that they have this special domain uh, at least once in their extracellular domain, and this special domain is known as an extracellular cadherin domain also known as a cadherin repeat domain. Okay, and I'll just write that down. It's also called a cadherin repeat domain. And the reason it's called that is because some of these cadherin proteins repeat this domain multiple times. I mean, some of them have up to 34 of the things in their extracellular domain, okay? So that's why it's called a cadherin repeat domain here. Okay, right. Uh, so, what we now want to see then is the families of cadherin proteins, because there are over 180 cadherin proteins now known within humans, and we're discovering more all the time. Okay, so we need some way of handling this. We need some way of grouping them into families, okay, to give us some sort of understanding of this. Okay, now at present, there are five main families of cadherin proteins. Okay, so let me put these families here. So the main family, the one that we are going to discuss hugely in a moment, is type 1 uh, cadherins, which are also known as classical cadherins, or you can combine it into one massive name, the type 1 classical cadherins. Okay, right. So, if you've heard of cadherins before, um, the cadherins you've heard of are probably type 1 classical cadherins. The famous one that everyone can actually remember the name of is E. cadherin, and E. cadherin was the first ever cadherin to be discovered, and uh, indeed it is a type 1 classical cadherin, and we will be coming back to these type 1 classical cadherins uh, later on. Okay, right. Uh, the second family of uh, cadherins, then, is the type 2 atypical cadherins. Okay, uh, we are not going to study the type 2 atypical cadherins in this video. Okay, we're just going to acknowledge that it is a family that exists. Okay, right. Uh, then, the next family we are going to study, okay, so these are the desmosomal cadherins, okay, and these are the ones which are going to be involved in the formation of desmosomes, okay, so they're quite important. Okay, so we will study the desmosomal cadherins. Okay, and then the final two families, again, we're not going to study them in this video. They're more niche knowledge, okay, so there are the flamingo cadherins, Okay, and then uh, finally there is also the protocatherins as well. Okay, so finally protocatherins. Now, it sh I, I should say that um, not all catherin family proteins actually fit into one of these families. So some people say that there are actually six subfamilies of catherins. The final subfamily is the family which contains everything that doesn't fit. Okay, so this is the family of everything that doesn't have a family, basically. Okay, so some people uh, say that there are six subfamilies of cadherins, uh, six, uh, five main ones, plus all the ones that don't actually fit into or any of those. Okay, right. So those are the five families of uh, cadherin proteins, then. What we now want to do is uh, talk about the type 1 classical cadherins. We're now going to do a more in-detailed study to the type 1 classical cadherins. Okay, right then. Let's talk about the type 1 classical cadherins then. So the first thing to say is that the type 1 classical cadherins are mainly involved in cell-cell direct interactions. Okay, so let me just remind you. Remember there were two ways that you could bind two cells together. There were direct cell-cell interactions, okay, where the two cell adhesion molecules on the surfaces of the cells would bind directly to one another, okay, like so, okay. And there were, then there were also the indirect interactions where the cell adhesion molecule firstly bound to the extracellular matrix, and then the other cell adhesion molecule on the other cell then also bound to the extracellular matrix, and that's the indirect way of linking two cells together. 
Okay, right. Now, type 1 classical cations are going to be mainly involved in forming cell-cell interactions, like so. So you're going to have a type 1 classical cation on one cell, and it's going to bind to another uh, cation, uh, type 1 classical cation on the other cell. Okay, right. And they are going to form structures known as adherens junctions. Okay, and we will come back to talking about what an adherens junction is later. But just to give you the brief answer now, basically an adherens junction is a huge um, collection of loads of interactions between classical cations. Okay, so when you're going to link two cells together, you do not just take one cation molecule on this cell and link it to another single cation molecule on the other cell. Okay, you get a huge number of cation molecules on this cell, a huge number on this cell, and you make loads of these interactions all grouped together, and that then produces you something that's reasonably strong. That collection of absolutely loads of the things is then called an adherens junction, okay, in the case that we are talking about type 1 classical cations anyway. Okay, right. So, Next thing to discuss is to give you the famous examples of type 1 classical cations. And these are the ones that generally, if people have heard of a cation protein, they've heard of these three. Okay, right. So the famous three examples, the most famous example is E. cation itself. Okay, so this is the one that has received an enormous amount of attention because of its involvement in cancer. Okay, carcinomas. Right, uh, so E. cadherin, what does the E then stand for? Well, the E tells you where it's present, basically. This tells you that it's mainly present within epithelia. Okay, right, so this is the cadherin that you find a lot of in epithelial cells. Okay, then some other major examples. You also have n cadherin. Okay, and again, the n is going to tell us about where you find this type of a cadherin. Okay, so the n is for neural. Okay, so these are cadherins that are found in neural tissue. Now, they're also found in muscle tissue. Okay, so you can also find n cadherin within muscle tissue as well, so it's not just neural tissue. Next up, the final example I want to give is P. cadherin. Okay, and P. cadherin, the P here stands for placenta. Okay, so you find a lot of P. cadherin within the placenta. It's also found specifically within a specific type of epithelia, which is the epidermis, okay, the outer layer of the skin, which is the epithelium that borders the outer world. Okay, right. So that's what E. cadherin, uh, N. cadherin, and P. cadherin are. Okay, and they're all type 1 classical cadherins. Okay, now let's talk about the structure of these things then now. Okay, let's do this here. So I'm going to have the cell membrane of cell 1 here. Okay, this is going to be the extracellular fluid side, the ECF. Okay, and this is going to be the cytoplasm. Okay, and now I'm going to show you uh, the structure of all of these classical cadherins. Okay, so they all have the same structure. We've only seen three of them. There are far more than three classical cadherins, but they all have the same structure. Okay, so they all have um, five of the extracellular cadherin uh, domains, basically. Okay, so here's one of the things. Here is another one. Okay. Here is another one, here's a fourth one, and then we've got the final one up here. Okay, they also all have their amino terminus extracellularly, like so. So they then have their amino terminus followed by these uh, five EC domains, so extracellular cadherin domains. So you've got five repeats of these extracellular cadherin domains, so we can already see why this is called the cadherin repeat domain. Then you've got your single membrane spanning alpha helix. Now I haven't really drawn it as an alpha helix, but that would be an alpha helix there. Okay, and then you finish with a short cytoplasmic tail, and then you'll have the little carboxylic acid terminus intracellularly here. 
Okay, so let's colour in those uh, extracellular cadherin domains in blue. So we've got these five extracellular cadherin domains here. There's the third one, fourth one, and then our fifth one up here. Okay, right. So that's the structure of all of these classical cadherins. Okay, so what we now want to um, discuss is how this is going to bind with a classical cadherin that's on the opposite cell. Okay, so basically it is this N-terminal extracellular cadherin domain which is going to do the do the binding basically. So this N-terminal extracellular cadherin domain, as it's called simply because it's the extracellular cadherin domain which is at the end terminus of the um, classical cadherin protein here. Okay, so it's going to bind with another end terminal extracellular cadherin domain on another cadherin protein here. So here's the amino terminus of the second uh, cadherin protein. Okay, and now we can see that the two N-terminal extracellular cadherin domains are bound together. Okay, and then here comes the rest of this second cadherin protein that we've got here. And it's going to have its membrane spanning alpha helix going across the cell membrane of this second cell over here. So this will be cell 2 over here. Alright, so all of these... These are extracellular cadherin domains, EC domains. So once again, I'll color them in, in blue. So the purpose of this picture then is to show you which portions of these two classical cadherins are actually interacting. Okay, it's this final N-terminal extracellular cadherin domain which interacts. Okay, and that's going to hold the two extracellular cadherin. Oh, well, sorry, the two cadherin proteins together, okay, and therefore the two cells are being held together. Okay, right, uh, so, um, this, uh, well, there's one more piece of terminology that I want to now discuss, which is the concept of homophilic binding, okay, so homophilic binding means that the two um, classical cadherins that are bound here are the same, basically. That's what homo means. It means the same. So homophilic binding uh, in the context of cadherins means that the two cadherins that you are binding together are going to be the same. Contrast that to the concept of heterophilic binding. Okay? Hetero means different. Okay, heterophilic binding in the concept of in the context of cadherins means that this first cadherin here will be a different cadherin to the second cadherin here. Okay, now some classical cadherins can actually form heterophilic bonds. Okay, for instance, E cadherin can bind to other classical cadherins that are not another E cadherin. Okay, but we'll keep this nice and simple and we'll just think about homophilic binding, where the two cadherin proteins are the same, because that's more simple to understand. Okay, so you might have two E cadherin proteins here, okay, bound together by their two N-terminal uh, e e extracellular uh, cadherin domains here. Okay, right. Uh, the other thing I want to discuss is the fact that this binding is dependent on the presence of extracellular calcium. Okay, so if, if there is not calcium ions, or well, if there is not a high enough concentration of calcium ions in the extracellular fluid, then these cadherin proteins cannot bind to each other. Okay, so the normal concentration of calcium in the extracellular fluid is 1.5 millimolar. Okay, if it goes down too much, these cadherin proteins will not be able to bind to each other. And this is the reason that they are actually called uh, cadherin proteins. Okay, it stands for calcium adhering, basically. Okay, so that's where the C in the cadherin came from. Uh, because of the fact that they will only adhere to one another in the presence of calcium. So their adhesion is completely dependent on the presence of extracellular calcium. Now, why is this? Well, basically, in these regions between neighboring extracellular cadherin domains, and these regions are known as hinge domains, okay, you have binding sites for calcium. 
Okay, so in these special domains, which I'm going to color in in vivid purple here, which sit between extracellular cadherin domains, okay, you have binding sites for calcium. So calcium can bind uh, to these hinge domains, okay, and when calcium binds there, it causes the cadherin protein to become extremely rigid, okay, they become rigid rods where all of the extracellular cadherin domains are in a straight line like so. When calcium is not bound to those calcium binding sites in these hinge domains, what happens is the thing comes becomes extremely floppy, basically, okay? The extracellular cadherin domains can bend relative to one another, and it just sort of flops all over the place. And this isn't very amenable for them to bind to one another, because this interaction is actually horrendously weak. They don't bind particularly strongly. It's not like uh, a receptor binding to its ligand, where the affinity constant is uh, incredible, okay? In the case of these... Um, interactions between these two cadherin proteins, it's extremely weak interaction, okay? So if they're flopping around all over the place, then they're not going to be held together by this uh, weak interaction here, okay? So you need them to be nice and rigid uh, in order for them to bind together, and calcium binding uh, to the binding sites in these hinge domains is what causes that rigidity, basically, okay? And that's why uh, for the binding of these two classical cadherins together. In fact, for the binding of all cadherins together, uh, you do need uh, the presence of extracellular calcium. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video, and in the next video, what we'll start the study of is uh, what molecules you're going to have bound to the cytoplasmic C-terminus of uh, these cadherin proteins, these classical cadherin proteins, uh, and how those are going to attach to uh, actin filaments of the cytoskeleton of the cell, okay? And then we'll come on to how they all aggregate together to make a much larger, much stronger interaction between two cells known as an adherens junction.